when you're writing a program, it's a good idea to document your code, to use comments in your code, and you can use comments to leave notes to yourself, notes to other programmers. There's a few different styles of comments when you're writing Java programs, and you should be familiar already with the one-line comment. For example, here's a method that drives a car a certain number of miles, and I want to make sure that the, the miles are always a positive number, otherwise I won't add them on to the odometer. So I'll put a note to myself and to others who look at my code that say, don't let the miles get added if negative. And that's just a one-line comment. Somebody looking at my code will know what that's about. If you have a more extensive comment or a multi-line comment, you can use a different style. For example, anything that begins with a slash followed by an asterisk begins a multi-line comment and I can type as many lines as I want without needing the double slash on each line so this method gets the number of miles and that's all it does both of these are basically the same kind of comments they're just notes to the programmer notes to yourself and it doesn't really matter in these situations whether you choose the single line comment style where you put a double slash on each line or use multi-line as your style. But there's a third style that's a little more technical than either of these styles and it's a, considered a javadoc style comment. You may be familiar with the output of these types of comments if you've ever looked at the Java API documentation this is just from the official documentation of all of the Java classes that you get when you install Java. You can take a look at the documentation for a class. Let's look at the rectangle class, which is right here. And when we look at the documentation available online for the rectangle class, we see that each of the instance variables, and the rectangle class has public instance variables, which is the reason we can see these here. Um, each of the constructors and each of the methods has comments describing it. And if I click on one of these, it takes me to a lengthier discussion uh, or description of that particular method or constructor. And that includes information about each parameter and down here it tells me what each parameter means and if the method has a return type it will tell me about that so for example let's find here's a method called is empty and it has a return type of boolean and I can see in the documentation information about the meaning of that boolean that's being returned well it turns out if you take the time to put comments in your own program these javadoc style comments you can generate this kind of documentation automatically simply by putting the right kinds of comments in your code. And so that's what this is about, is what the javadoc style comments look like, how to quickly set them up in Eclipse, and then how to generate the web pages that, that will show you the same kind of output that you see in the official API documentation. So it's actually pretty easy to put javadoc style comments in your code. They begin, instead of with just a slash and an asterisk, they begin with a slash and a double asterisk. And in Eclipse, if I put a slash, double asterisk, and press return, it does a lot of extra stuff for me. It, it automatically generates these at param tags with the names of all of the parameters of my method or my constructor. So notice that I have this constructor that has a make, a year, and a mileage parameter. And Eclipse auto-generated these um, at param tags with those same three names here. I'm going to add a little bit to that. But these, these should remind you a lot of the multi-line comments, except this one extra asterisk. But that extra asterisk is what's needed in order to generate output later on that looks like this. So it, we begin with just a description of this is a constructor. Um, this constructs 
a car with a specified make, year, and mileage. And then for each parameter in the constructor, I should put a brief description of what each of those parameters is about. So the make is the make of the car to be constructed. Yeah, we don't need the to be constructed. The year of the car and the starting mileage. And that's it. I give a, a description of the constructor, a description of the meaning of each parameter, and notice the format. It's at param, the name of the parameter, and then a description of the meaning of that particular parameter. Don't just leave it as at param make, but describe what make means. And down at the bottom in Eclipse, one of my windows in the standard Java perspective is the Javadoc window, and it will actually show me roughly what to expect if I generate the, the Javadoc documentation. I can see here is the comment that I typed up here, and here are descriptions of each of the parameters down here. I can do this for each constructor, I can do it for each method, and I can do it for the class itself. So if you want to describe the class, go up to the beginning before the class and slash double asterisk enter and it's putting my author name here. I'll put my real name. Describe the class. This class implements a simple car that can be driven around. This is the first version of this class that I've written, so I'll put an at version tag in it. Uh, 1.0. And down at the bottom, I can see in my Javadoc window what this looks like. Here's the description, here's the version, here's the author name. Same thing, let me do this one more time for a method. Here's a method that doesn't have any parameters, but it does have a return type. So let's look at what that looks like. Slash double asterisk and notice that an at return tag is automatically generated so first we describe the mes method this returns the current mileage of the car and this returns an int so we describe what that int is about the this car mileage. And actually a standard word to use is this instead of the. I like that a little better. And then again we look down here and see roughly what this output looks like. You do this for each method and for the class itself. And there are other places where you can put comments like these. For example, if, if a method throws an exception then you can describe information about the exception that gets thrown. But let's pretend we've written all this and actually generate documentation for our car class that looks just like this.